I was uh, an airline pilot not too long ago, and I know we as pilots make many mistakes each flight. You may not want to know this, but that's the <laughs> truth. We are two in the cockpit. We have checklists. We have fail-safe systems in multiple levels. And we sit there in a quiet place in the front of the airplane and the flight attendants taking care of the passengers in the back. All right. Uh, when I was with my wife at the hospital and witnessing her getting treatment of uh, breast cancer, I saw there were multiple drugs involved in, in this infusion therapy. I then recognized here is an underlying risk of actually mixing the drugs. So I invented Rondello, a multiple uh, turn valve, multiple inlet turn valve that actually is this physical barrier. And I have it in my hands. It's absolutely revolutionary. In fact, we actually got, after much work, of course, European Union to believe in us as well. And uh, we are co-founded by them. And uh, we're here today to look for uh, co-investment of the private sector of 2 million euros. OK, so how big is the problem? Actually, 90% of all the patients in, uh, uh, that are hospitalized get some sort of infusion therapy, of which 74% uh, of the drugs given should not be mixed. 74%. In case they are mixed, in 26% of the cases, they are life-threatening. And actually, nurses have witnessed drug incompatibility occur three to ten times within the last month. Problem number two is that there are about 2.1 million patients in Europe that undergo chemotherapy, for instance but there are 7.3 million nurses working with hazardous drugs. There are studies finding that 17,000 incremental spontaneous abortions occur among nurses who are handling hazardous drugs. And actually, 10,000 malformative born, um, children with malformities are born, and 2,200 leukemia cases among the nurses. I find this quite unfair. Okay, so how can Rondello contribute to this? Well, actually, uh, by connecting multiple drugs and leave them connected, because you simply cannot mix them. That is what we think Rondello can contribute to here. We are not the replacement for all devices. Sometimes you need to give parallel flow, and then you should use those devices. But we have actually uh, made a new segment for sequential infusion with a drug flush, drug flush, and then you should use our devices. And again, 74% of all the drugs given should not be mixed. So it's a huge market out there. And those are the components we are making in Helsingborg. And we have our own clean room, and we have our own automation to do this. One part per second, 20 million per year. So we would like to be a supplier to the big ones, like Baxter, BD, B. Brown, etc. And this was all achieved thanks to the contribution of EIC Accelerator Program. OK, how can we get those volumes? We need to make adoption happen, right? So we actually did our homework and also brought forward the IV sets ourselves. We have a product catalog that just now are released with CMARC MDR. Anyone heard about MDD, MDR transition? This is a big thing for established companies like B. Brown, Baxter, whoever, since they have thousands and thousands of products. And we have now already got the CMDR certificate of 84 different IV sets configurations. We do this to make adoption happen. And actually, one of the biggest companies within this space are now ordering from us um, sample volumes, small volumes, but making a trial because of we having this C mark. So they really appreciate that we did the work, even though they had all the finances to do it themselves. We do have customers already. We just started to sell, but we have a quite long list. 
Uh, we have been on trade shows for the last four years, both in Europe and in USA. And uh, we have some exciting countries. I didn't know before we got this customer, there were 220 million living in Brazil, for instance. There alone, that customer thinks he can sell 20 million on Dello. That's occupying one machine. And then you skip five years ahead in our budget if that comes alive. And of course, we're starting from zero. And do we have patents? Yes, we have. About 100. Eight patent families. And how so? Well, one of the largest companies, again, in the world, there are five of them, and this is another one, uh, actually licensed out the first patent families. And they paid for 30 countries each. And then I ended it because I think it was too slow. So five years ago, I developed the product myself, and we decided I'm going to be a supplier for them instead. I still wait for that purchase order, but uh, now I can at least uh, affect my own uh, destiny, how fast it will go. So we're very well protected. And this is our clear room automation, and this is our multi cabinet tool, huge investments. We also have found companies coming to us saying, oh, by the way, we can use this for drug development. And that's what I think is interesting in this space, because all your fantastic drugs need to be given and developed. And it's given by the IV sets, but it's also developed somewhere. I think you have it in this pocket. So this is the lure version for healthcare, and this is the barb version for bioprocess industry. Actually, there are companies now building a machine around Rondello. So we becoming the, the supplier of the vital part, and they building the machine. Um, it's like an inject toner uh, business idea, right? So quite convenient. OK, so why is this good? Zero dead space. Uh, it means that we get accurate feeding, accurate sampling, of your bioreactor. And when you get accurate, you can get down in size. We can even have a continuous loop and feed back our sample um, so we don't waste anything. Before, you always waste, before you take your next fresh sample. But if we have a continuous loop, and then we get from that continuous loop out our sample without any risk of previous contamination, we actually reduce the um, the very important drug that you're just developing. And in the future, this is the pilot thinking, right? We prepare all on the ground, and then we just system survey. So I thought, why not doing the same for the nurses? It's just a demo, but this shows a little bit how we're thinking and how the future will be. This is also highly interesting by the big pharma companies that we're talking to. Again, we are financed by EU, and 5.9 million euro is our total need. And we have additionally 1 million euro available to us if we find 2 million euros from the private sector. And speak with me later on, and please join us to aid nurse to the right. Thank you. Thank you. I will end my timer. <laughs> Fantastic. As I think all in this room could tell, you're a highly skilled uh, speaker and presenter. However, your product is quite complex. How do you communicate about it so that, for example, investors can say, OK, I know what the, this product does? Yeah, all right. So it's quite complex, perhaps, to make, but very easy, I think, to understand. You see, it has multiple inlets, right? And when the handle is positioned towards one inlet, that drug is flowing to the patient. In all between positions, flushing fluid separates the drugs. Not too complex. <laughs> Only two plastic pieces solve this, with a little bit of silicon in between. And we also then can perhaps minimize the bioreactors with millions of dollars to be saved. I think it's quite easy to understand, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm perhaps 
part. <laughs> oh, so so let, let me know. But uh, yeah, I think that's our benefits. It's quite easy to understand. Yeah, because I think that is a thing that always comes yeah. up that companies sometimes don't appreciate the how clear the communication needs to yeah. be about you know just getting what the product is yeah. uh, when you describe it. But let's move on. Uh, here comes another question. How do you prep the drugs into the device in a nurse safe way? Good question. Mm. Uh, so this is the primary line that is connected to the neutral cell line bag, like that. You just press it in. Uh, the secondary lines that are connected here are already pre-connected to the drugs and already prepared by the pharmacy. And then you have flushing fluid at the end to be connected here. So actually, it's already pre-connected to, to the bag, and you connect the, the secondary line here. Mm -hmm. So that's how they do it. If they, how they get the drug into the bag, you, it's different. So if it's hazardous drugs, you're using closed system transfer devices under a hood, usually. Mm -hmm. um, what is your estimated gross margin per sold unit or set? This is why we got the contribution. Because we said, if we're going to reach the big companies, only in Helsingborg, when Beckton Dickinson were there, they produced 150 million stopcocks a year, the normal three-way stopcocks, which is very standard. In order for us to be able to deliver to them, we need to lower cost of goods. And that is why we invested in automation, and that is why we invested in own clear room. So our gross margin on the component is 84% when we say sell to higher volumes. If we sell per piece, it's, it's way much more. But we sell uh, high volumes, that's what we aim to do. Mm. So 84% and to total for the company, including the Ivy sets, is like 60. So this drags down the gross margin. We only have 30 for this. But we need to do this in order to get the volumes on the component. Mm. So going back to the, the root of why you do this, mm. um, how well known is uh, the need for this aid and um, your product? Well, it's a, it's a dark, uh, it's a gray zone. You never know. Uh, you you may never know that you have actually done an error. That that's one thing. So uh, you get the blood cost, uh, blood clot uh, two to three weeks after. Sometimes you can see precipitation in line. So it's very hard by studies to actually prove how how important it is to have this type of valve that avoid drug mixing. So for us, it's very important also to be, to be likable, to offer more ports, to have other also unique selling points. Uh, for instance, connect only to the device, since you have no risk of mixing them, perhaps could be a mitigation strategy to avoid drug exposure. Uh, so that is yet another benefit. So we try to find different unique selling points who we talk to. Yes, mm -hmm. depending on who we talk to. Great. I think that will conclude if there's no one in the room with an urge to raise their hand. No, then I thank you so much for your presentation. Okay, thank you.